Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. We're back here at Sioka Subaru in Ewing, New Jersey to check out this brand new 2025 Subaru Forester. This is the limited trim, second to the top. Magnetite gray is the color, symmetrical all-wheel drive. So we're going to check out this Subaru Forester, and you can let me know. The premium trim, 34 grand. This one, a lot more. So if you want a Forester and you want those all those creature comforts and you want to go for your lungs, Maybe this car is for you, so let's dig in. Front end of our Forester in the Magnetite Gray. I do like how the body color works with the grill. Full spread of LED lighting on the limited trim. Looking good. I love how they have the color match on the grill with the body. Just like the premium trim looks good. Subaru badge in the center. LED fog lamps as well. Now, as we come around to our wheel and tire setup, we're going to get an 18-inch machined aluminum alloy wheel. Subaru badge on the center cap. Now these wheels are wrapped in Falcon all-season tires. 225 on the width, a 55 series sidewall 18s. All four corners, symmetrical, all-wheel drive, standard as we move on back. Again, it is an evolution of Forrester design. It looks very similar to the outgoing Forrester model, except for some slight exterior changes, but I think they did a nice job as we move in closer. We're going to go color match side view mirrors with LED turn signals, color match front and rear door handles, fuel filler cap on the right side, symmetrical all-wheel drive badge back here on the tailgate area, up top flat black on your roof rails, color matched roof, shark fin antenna, standard sunroof. The rear end of the Forester, we do have a, roof, a small roof spoiler coming off the top, the wiper down below on the glass. We do have LED taillights, but standard bulbs for turn signals in the back, the Subaru far badge on the left Forester stamped into the tailgate, which I really like. That looks nice. As we move on back, we are going to go flat black on our rear bumper with the exhaust coming out the right side of the vehicle. Under the hood of this Forester Limited, we have Subaru's 2.5 liter naturally aspirated flat four engine, mated to a Lineartronic CVT with eight manual shift modes and SI drive, 180 horsepower, 178 pound-feet of torque, MPGs, 26 in the city, 33 on the highway, 29 combined. The engine's minimum octane rating is 87, so you can run this on regular unleaded gas. Before we get into the interior, you're going to want to know, Mike, how much for this limited trim? Well, you know what? When you go up in trims, you go up in price in a big way on the Forester. So here we go. MSRP base for the 25 Forester Limited. 35995 This one has a bunch of options, which we'll go over when we check out the window sticker. But once you add those in and your destination and delivery charge of $1,395 from Subaru's Ota Gunma Japan assembly plant, we have a total MSRP for this vehicle of $39,921. So let's check out the interior. Starting with the driver door panel, we'll move on in closer. We're going to go black soft touch across the top. Then we have this fabric insert with blue cross stitch, which I really like. Armrest nice and soft. Gloss black around your don't chrome door handle. And then we have flat black on our switch gear. We don't have memory seats and we don't have power fold mirrors. We have a decent size door pocket. And then we have the upgraded Harman Kardon sound system. Flip box, nice large dead pedal brake and accelerator with the Forester all season mats in the vehicle at this time. Seating wise, you're going to go full power for the driver and the front passenger. Black leather with the blue cross stitch, nice and soft, looks good. Nice understated classic looking interior. Passenger door panel, same action as the driver with the soft touch and the fabric and the soft armrest with the blue stitching. As we move on over, we're going to go up top soft touch. We do have this hexagonal design in the front dash, which I think looks pretty cool. And then right into our heat and air vent. And then we have some simulated wood trim down here, which frankly, with all this black or dark gray, if Subaru wants to call it that, and blue, we have this sticking out like a sore thumb, the simulated maple wood. And they might have been better off going a little darker. Let me know what you think about that. And then underneath that, nice large glove box. Infotainment system. Now, of course, the Forester has the same system as the other Subaru models do. No more dual panel action. We got Subaru's seven 
excuse me, 11.6 inch Starlink system with navigation. Right there, looking good. Wireless CarPlay Android Auto. We hit the button, try to wake this baby up, and it does. The performance is pretty good. It's a little glitchy. Again, this is based on the TomTom software, which I'm not a huge fan of. See these in Subarus and Nissans lately. But let me know what you think about that. But we do have our four-way hazards. We do have physical volume and tuning knobs and physical controls for your defrost and to change the temperature in your climate system. So I do like that. Now, we do have three-stage heated seats for the driver and the front passenger. Right there, we do have dual climate, which you can hit and bring up. And you can get all the action on there, sync them together, adjust, your, adjust it. But most of the controls will be done within this screen, as you can tell. Engine auto stop, start on, off, auto vehicle hold, vehicle settings, home button, Bluetooth your phone, and that's your driver profiles that you can add. Up top, we still have that dual panel, which right now is showing us our Sirius XM but you can get other information up top. So I do like the fact they kept that. They just put it all into one screen. And now we can go back to home. That's our home button where we get all of our apps right here. No problem. Looking good. Here's our radio controls. We can go in there if we want, get our Sirius XM up or our other AM FM radio stations and your presets. So it is very, very easy to figure out and easy to navigate. We go to reverse. We check out our backup camera. On the upper half, nice and clear with trajectory. There's our X modes right here. Normal deep snow, mud, snow, dirt. So they got the X mode action going in here for you as well. So that's a good deal. Moving on down further, we do have an aux jack, USB-C, USB-A, and a wireless charging pad. And then here is the gear shift that's going to take you through the simulated gears of the CVT. I would, would have liked them to see, to see them go with this blue stitching from the seats and the door on the gator rather than the light gray, but you let me know. And then we have our electric emergency brake, two cup holders, and a 12 volt, and our Subaru key fob right here. Locked. The Subaru emblem is unlocked. Pop the tailgate panic button. Nice and light. And then we do have a nice soft armrest with the blue cross stitch. Open it up, and we have a nice area for storage. Subaru steering wheel, nice wheel with the cross stitch. Again, I would have liked to see the blue here instead of the light gray, but round bottom wheel, but I have plenty of room to get in and out of the vehicle. Subaru badge on the horn button. On the left, you're going to go telephone, voice command, sources, seek for your music, controls for the digital portion of your dash. And then on the right, you got your adaptive cruise safety suite controls, your SI drive right down here, and your heated steering wheel right down there. One touch on, one touch off. We do have some paddles sitting here. If you want to go ahead and go through these simulated gears manually. And then we have our, on the left our headlights and fog lamp controls. And then on the right front and rear wiper. Push button start right around the corner here. And your trip reset right behind your right stalk. And then down on the left, you're going to have your open the tailgate, brighten dim the dash. And then you can turn that uh, automatic tailgate on or off with this switch. And then we do have a manual tilting and telescoping wheel. We check out our dash and they've stuck with their analog digital combo. Analog gauges for speedometer, tachometer, fuel level and coolant temperature. And then we do have additional information you can go through and your small center screen, whatever you want to check out when you're going down the road or check in on a road trip, see what kind of gas mileage you're getting. Overhead console, spot for your shades, you want your LED dome lighting to come on off when you open and close the door. This button right here, all the way to the left on door. So then when you open it up, lighting comes on, close the door, lighting will dim out. SOS button in case there's an emergency on the road. And then control for our roof. Now the shade, this is an oversized roof. As you can see, it goes way back. So you really got to stretch to with your arm to get that all the way open. And then you just... One touch, hold it in for a second, wind buffer comes up, and the roof will go all the way back, and then one touch closed. But if you want to close the roof, you really got to stretch way back and get it with this oversized roof. But there you go, sun visor with vanity and an LED light. Does it slide? No, but we do have an extension. And we have a framed rear view mirror with compass and home link auto dim.
getting in the back seat of the Forester. I have the seat set for my driving position and no problem getting in with this boxy flat roof. Plenty of room for my head, shoulders, and knees at five foot eleven. The leather all the way down, two seat pockets right here, and one little one for your phone. So I do like that. That's behind both front seats. Then in the back here, we have two heat and air vents and then a USB-C, USB-A. And again, these dead switches here are for heated seats in the back. And that's got to be the touring trim because they're omitted here on the Limited. And there's only one more trim up from this. Back door panels looks good, except we're going to go with hard black plastic up top and a little bit of soft touch, but I don't have that blue cross stitch. So we do have some cost cutting on the back door panel and on a limited trim, I shouldn't see that. And then on the back, we have the leather with the blue cross stitch, nice and comfortable, perforated leather, looks beautiful. And then our armrest, super soft, two cup holders. So overall, it's pretty comfortable here in the back of this Forester Limited. Getting in the cargo area of the Forester, you can pop it from the dash, you can pop it from the key fob, you can come to the back, Right underneath or above the license plate, there's a button. You hit it, beeps a couple of times. Nice electric assist on the way up. Nice electric assist on the way down using this button. And with the rear seats up, we're looking at 29.6 cubic feet of cargo space in the back of the Forester. Moving on in, here are the carpeted Forester floor mats that are in the vehicle. We have the all-season Forester cargo mat. You open this up, and you have more area for storage underneath. Then you open this up. And we do have a spare and some tools, so thank you Subaru for the spare. Now, in the back, on the left side, we do have a 12 volt right here, so they got you set. We got some tie downs. We got the subwoofer on the right side for this Harman Kardon sound system, and we can drop the back seats from back here. In this limited trim, all you have to do is pull this switch, and down they go, and I like that. That's nice. So now, and we do have this tonneau cover as well. But with the rear seats down and that tonneau cover out in this big boxy shape, we're looking at 74.4 cubic feet of cargo space in the back of this Forester. Forester window sticker, here we go. 25 Forester Limited. Not rated for crash test yet. Consumer Reports recommended vehicle. Fuel economy estimates. Final assembly in Japan. Standard equipment. Here are the options. And then our full MSRP from the factory. Let's take this baby up for a spin. All right, we are pulling out of Moody Park in Ewing. Check out this Forester Limited. Same powertrain, though, as the premium one we saw, but now we're looking at almost 5K more, largely for the extra amenities, the leather, all that other stuff. So if you want a Forester, but you want a nicer, more luxurious, more high-end spec, then your Limited trim is probably going to be the one that you would buy. Is a ton of money for a Forester. A ton. And you, in my view, you're going to really, really want to have one of these in order to shell out that kind of money for a Forester. But you let me know what you think about that statement. Because in my view, that premium trim came with a lot of the stuff you would need, plus the sunroof. Um, and that was like 34.5, if I remember right, 34.4, somewhere in there. But in typical Forester fashion with this boxy shape, we got plenty of visibility out the windshield, side glass, side view mirror, rear window, no problem. Full set of Subaru Star, uh, Starlink, or excuse me, Subaru EyeSight technology in here, blind spot monitoring, cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, pre-collision, all that action is in this Forester. So they got you covered there as far as all those amenities go. And with this 2025 redesign, they really did a nice job. They tightened, you know, they, they did some work on the chassis. They did some work on the suspension. They did some work on this uh, CVT um, to give you a more pleasurable ride, a better handling Forester. And I think this does handle better. They just sharpened everything up on the Forester to make it feel 
better going down the road and better behind the wheel. Brake wise, no problem at all. Stops on a dime. And you're gonna get this 2.5 flat four. Now, we're down on horsepower by two. You don't even notice it, frankly. Two, you're not gonna notice. So I wouldn't get all worked up that we're two horsepower less, but we have the torque figure at 178. Now that's coming in lower, at a lower RPM than it did in the outgoing Forester. So that makes up for it, it makes this thing get up and go down the road, no problem. But at the end of the day, we're looking at our handling, it is very good, it's light, but it's very tight, very direct, so I do like that. But at the end of the day, this is a practical, all-wheel drive vehicle that's going to get you and your family or your friends and your gear to wherever you want to go fairly economically with the gas mileage and without the use of a hybrid because Subaru at least right now doesn't have any hybrids in their lineup even though that is coming but it gets right up to speed no problem nobody's going to drive this like a maniac I don't think as far as the paddles but you do have your X mode so if you need to, you need to go off road on trails and whatnot depending on where your Subaru adventures take you you got that all set and ready to go you got 8.7 inches of ground clearance which is a really good number for this Forester as far as getting you off on some trails and whatnot so I do like that and you got all the safety tech in here to make sure that everything is is uh, safe and no problem and your blind spot and your cross traffic which is a good deal as well so they have a lot of good stuff in here the the question that i have on the higher level forester trims is is it really worth all of this extra money uh on this forester and that's the question for you guys to uh answer for yourselves and let me know in the comments uh 39.9 we're going to call it 40 is that just too expensive for a 25 Forester? Let me know, put it in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. But I do want to thank Sioka Subaru here in Ewing, New Jersey for allowing the channel access to this 2025 Subaru Forester limited trim for review today. I'd like to thank all of you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. Please also consider subscribing and turn on that notification bell so you never miss another Shabby's Rides video. And I'll see all of you on the rebound. Take care, everyone.